Hello, my name is Kyle Hartley. And my name is Sanina. Welcome to the Getting Started video for LabVIEW for FRC. We are two of the application engineers and national instruments who will be supporting you during the build season. The main goal of this video is to introduce what's all included in the kit of parts, including the compact Rio controller which National Instruments provides. We're also going to cover how to set up the CRIO, how to use LabVIEW to program your robot, and also how to use the robotic simulator. The robotic simulator is only available with LabVIEW. Since there's more information available than what could possibly be summarized in just one video, please go to ni.com frc for more information. Now we're going to take a look at the kit of parts. The CRIO FRC2 is the controller for the robot. CRIO stands for Compact Reconfigurable Input and Output. The CRIO is the main controller we will program for the robot. We can use three modules in FRC. The order of the modules is important for the first three slots. The analog input module is first. This allows us to read values from analog sensors for our robot. The second module is a specialty digital I.O. 5 volt module that allows us to output pulse width modulation or PWM signals to driver motor controllers as well as read encoders that can be attached to the wheels. The third module is a high voltage digital output module with, that we'll use to control devices that need higher voltages such as actuators. The DIO module is connected to a digital sidecar that allows us to break the pins out of the module very easily. The other two modules have connector blocks that attach to the top of each module. The battery is the main source of power for the robot. We connect the positive terminal to the 120 amp breaker and then connect the breaker to the positive terminal on the power distribution board. The power distribution board allows us to safely power parts of our robot using breakers. You really need to push those guys in. The CRIO is powered by the 12 volt terminal of the power distribution board. We also connect the motor controllers to the 40 amp breakers on the power distribution board. We then connect the motors to the motor controllers, which we then control using the PWM lines from the digital sidecar. Finally, the wireless bridge is powered by the 5 volt terminal from the power distribution board. The bridge provides wireless communications with our robot when connected via an Ethernet cable to the Compact Rio. Now let's take a look at the LabVIEW FRC software included in your kit. This is what the packaging is going to look like and it's going to include all of this. This will be the DVD that will have LabVIEW for FRC on it. In order to activate it, you will need this guy right here. It's very important. The serial number is right here in the corner. It starts with an S. It's very tiny and very important. Do not throw this away. Once you've placed the DVD into the computer, you can go ahead and double click the autorun.exe to begin the installation process. You may be asked to install .NET 4.0 components for the installation to continue. If prompted, go ahead and install them and restart the computer to proceed with the installation. Rerunning the autorun.exe, you'll now be presented with several prompts asking what software to install, where to install it, and what your serial number is. Go ahead and install everything for now, just in case you need it later. There are three additional installers that need to be downloaded from ni.com frc. These should only be downloaded after you fully activate Labby for FRC, as updates for Labby for FRC will be downloaded with these installers. So the additional installers are FRC Utilities, FRC Driver Station, and updates for LabVIEW for FRC. Next, let's go ahead and set up our CRIO so we can program it with LabVIEW later on. First, we'll need to connect the Compact RIO to our computer directly with an Ethernet cable. We are going to set the IP address of the CRIO, format it with software, and give it a name. To set the IP address, go to Control Panel, Network and Internet, Network and Sharing Center, click on Local Area Connection, and then the Properties button. To change the IP address, we need to double click on TCP IP v4, and go ahead and select Use the following IP address and enter in the appropriate IP address for your team number. So in, in our scenario, we're using team ID 1234. So our IP address for our computer will be 10.12.34.5. And we'll need to set the subnet, subnet mask to be 255.255.255.0. .255 .255 Press OK to apply the settings, and that's it. 
Now we'll use the Serio imaging tool to configure our Serio. We will change the Serio's IP address so that we can now format the Serio. So we will select LabVIEW for our development environment. We will click on Format Controller. So we've selected an image, FRC underscore 2013 underscore v44 dot zip. We are going to change our device name. What should we call it? We could do, I guess dinosaur names are kind of cute. Right? How about like the Killinator? No. It's too <laughs> harsh. <laughs> it's much too harsh. Daisy. But it's a robot. It runs into things. It breaks through stuff. Daisinator, it's like harsh, but also gentle. It's like a mix of both. I like it. Daisinator. All right. We'll Daisy stick to it. Daisinator it is. We are going to change our device name to Daisinator. Our team ID that we are using for the purpose right now is 1234. You will put your team ID in there. And then we will click Apply. So once we click Apply, it'll go ahead and connect to our Compact Rio, and it'll format it with software. Once it formats it with software, you will notice that the current IP address will change, and it will become 10.12.34.2. Also, the current image will change. So as you can see right now, it says unknown. It'll change to be the image we have put on the controller. Now that we have the series set up, we can go ahead and test out in some code. We can actually open up a project in LabVIEW and run the code and actually test out if our robot works without even programming it. In LabVIEW, you program by connecting wires that represent the data to functions which we call virtual instruments or VIs. Let's get started by creating a sample project. Here we will look at some of the basic VIs you will see in Robot Main. From the LabVIEW FRC splash screen, click on FRC Serial Robot Project to begin creating the project. We'll give our project a name, enter the IP address of the Compact Rio into the appropriate field, and click Finish to continue. It can take several minutes for LabVIEW to create the project. Let's go ahead and fast forward to our project that's already created. Once LabVIEW is done creating our project, you should see the Project Explorer window. All of our code by default will be run from the robot main VI. The two main BIs you'll be working on are Autonomous Independent and Teleoperated. These are for our Autonomous and Manual Driver sections of code. Next we have the Begin VI. This is where we create references to any hardware that our robot will use. By default, we have the drive motors, a joystick, and an axis camera added. This is where you will add any additional motors or servos to use with your robot. We also have the Finish VI. This is where we close all of our references to the motors and any other devices our robot is using that we created in Begin.VI. We also have a VI for time tasks, as well as vision, if you plan on using a camera on your robot. If we click the run arrow in the top left of Robot Main, LabVIEW will deploy our code to the Compact Rio. If we open the FRC driver station and click the Enable button, once the code is done deploying, we should be able to drive our robot. To enable the robotic simulator, stop the Robot Main code, click the Finish button to do so, now that it is stopped, you can right click in the bottom left hand corner and click on My Computer. This will now deploy the robotic simulator. Now, if we click Run, it'll take a little bit, but now that we have deployed it to My Computer instead of My C Rio, we'll actually see the robotic simulator start up instead of our physical robot. And there we have it, our virtual robot. So what you can do is you can control it with the joystick and it will move around the playing field completely as though it were your physical robot. So if you want to test any features you've implemented in your program, feel free to run the robotic simulator to see if your code actually works. And there we have it. Hopefully we've answered some of your most common questions that you might have during the build season. Great, now you'll be able to crush the competition at the championships. Not so fast. They still need to program their robot for the competition. What do you mean? We can't just strap a chainsaw to the top and let it run loose? <laughs> no, this isn't BattleBots. This is FRC. Oh, not even a flamethrower? Anyways, guys. <laughs>
<laughs> if you have any questions about programming or about your hardware, you can check out ni.com slash FRC. We have forums there that have your most common questions answered by either other FRC teams or application engineers here at National Instruments. We will also have phone support starting during the build season, and that phone number will be posted at ni.com slash FRC once the kickoff event goes through. Good luck to you guys, and I hope to see you at competition.